So that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. See you on the next one. Let's get to a little Q&A. And uh, I got burned on the sweat coin thing. Let's see. Ah, this is a good one. God, I used to think you were a decent guy, but this is the second stream where you bold face lie. No Lambo for you. I hope you're still on this on this stream because I'd love to you to tell me exactly where I lied about. Also, uh, Koning von Proven, hope I got that right. Pretty stupid to shill sweat after that rant. Uh, okay, debatable. Not great news is good news in this market. Terrible news is the new low. That is true. There is, uh, <laughs> and you know what? Even if good news comes out in a bear market, it just gets overlooked. And even if it like some of the the good news that like comes out recently, that would like usually would just rocket the market up. But in the bear market, and we all kind of feel it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, one man army sweat coin gets an indoor pool. No, that's not true. This is just a green screen. This is a green screen. I'm in my mom's basement. So yeah, that's it. This guy is a clown. Well, that is true. You have a point. All right. Anyhow. Okay, so you're in sweat point by walking. What does it do beyond that? The buy is junk or discounts that you get with the honey extension. So when you take a look at, let me turn this stupid thing off. When you take, I did the deep dive and it talks about monetizing your data and you taking the data that is being collected by Sweatcoin, which they have never sold your personal data like Facebook and all the rest of them do, but they give that option back to you and you can sell those to your employers, to insurance companies, to national health services or whatever kind of service you want to. And you can monetize your data in the way that you seem fit. And this is all regulated by the Dow. So there's seven different layers of revenue. It's, it's, this is not the scope of this video. Watch the deep dive. All right. And then this is a great question. DJ, how do we trust the sweat token app? What data is it's tracking? It's tracking everything. The big question is uh, who is selling it? And uh, from what I gather from the light paper and the conversation I have with the CEO, which is in the deep dive, they do not sell any of your data. So that's what it is. Uh, one man army again, you are on fire. Oh my God, so much garbage. Eh, okay. Uh, they get, and this is a good one. The Shaolin 015 says, they get the unemployment rate from the amount of people collecting unemployment checks. This is true. I am unemployed and I guarantee you that I'm not included in that number because I'm not collecting unemployment. And that really comes down to the shadow economy. And um, the same thing is over like where we live in Puerto Rico. There's a lot of people that say that they are, see, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a flip flop. A lot of people say that they are unemployed and they collect an unemployed check, but then they go work in certain odd jobs and they say, pay on the table because I can't, uh, you can't report because I don't want to have two uh, incomes. And of course, people will sometimes do that uh, because they get a, a discount for a labor. So there's two sides of the same story. Beardy. Hey, Roberto. Uh, how come when they say rate hike is already priced in, they raised the predicted amount in price till things? <laughs> I don't know, but that seems to happen a lot. Everybody tells me that everything's priced in. I'm like, is it? it seems like the price doesn't, no one told the price. Uh, James, I just got in early 2021 and I'm stupid to punt to be able to DC at this level. That is the way to think, James. Good job. Um, I can't tell you what to do. This isn't financial advice. I have my five rules I'm always talking about, but I think in the bear market is where I've made all my money before, probably where I'm going to make all my money again, or more so, uh, just by dollar cost averaging and being safe and not getting into too many crazy uh, projects. Now, I'll run Dan Degen, that second channel, that's like straight gambling. Just kiss your money goodbye on that one. But uh, there are some ones we've done pretty well. And um, we talk about them over there, but um, those are risky. That's like 5% of your portfolio. 95% is just straight head down, pale <laughs> lunch bucket, go to work, do your dollar cost averaging, uh, be in there for the long run, very boring, very repetitious. That's what this is. So not exciting. Adam, do I still owe my loan back on Celsius? I was margin call liquidated. And does that affect my credit score? So that's, what is a good question? First of all, to my knowledge, they don't report you to the big three credit companies. Uh, as far as I know. Now, I personally was liquidated too on my Celsius loan. What I did was I took a loan out to help pay for part of my home in Puerto Rico. 
and uh, because we had to pay straight cash for the whole thing. And when it came about, I was uh, traveling in Europe for the guy coin bureau conference. And unfortunately I missed a couple of margin calls. So I was all over the place, had uh, bad, bad reception. And then I just, it just, uh, within 24 hours I was liquidated and that was on me. So no one can blame anybody but me, but I got liquidated when Ethereum was 2,200 bucks. And what happens is, is since you're over collateralized, they give you back the Ethereum they didn't need to cover the loan. Uh, the money that I used went to another asset called a house and that worked out pretty well. So uh, that actually worked out great actually. And then, um, then the rest of the Ethereum went into my account in Celsius. I transferred, I got pretty ticked off. I transferred it into Bitcoin, put the Bitcoin into my ledger and, and there we are. But just remember that if you get liquidated on these loans, it is a taxable event. So just uh, be aware. Uh, Jose says, people at my job got to run a five time. Nice. Jose's place is hiring. Uh, the Shaolin again. Digital Asset News, do you think when Jay Powell speaks, he's speaking from an ivory tower that is disconnected from the realities of society? Maybe, but I mean, he made some great points. He made some great points. He talked about how you know, the unemployment rate uh, wasn't a disaster. He talked about how you know GDP just a quarter previously, not Q1 2022, but Q4 2021, was actually 5% up. And uh, he talked about how uh, there was balance on the, uh, on the corporate sheets. And on that one, he is correct. The problem is, is just like he talks about um, uh, inflation being transitory, and a lot of people talked about that, even Janet Yellen and a bunch of other people. It wasn't, and now here we are. Do I hate Jay Powell? No, I think he's just a guy trying to do a job and uh, didn't work out. And he does, you know, we all make mistakes. So well, we'll see. But I don't think, to be disconnected, I, I will tell you this. I mean, I drove, I, we just drove from Houston to El Paso today, over two days. And I can tell you the price of the pump was staggering. So uh, inflation does hit there. And of course, oil price. First goes crypto. No raises and lots of company approaching jobs, but most aren't hiring unless you are a laborer. That's true. And actually to get somebody to do any kind of uh, house repair is very difficult now because a lot of them are finishing up uh, jobs for the different housing markets. But as I understand it from the people who we know who work in construction and also work in, uh, in the housing market, they are tapering off dramatically the houses that they are building because of the uh, interest rates hike. There goes my grandson. All right, off he goes. <laughs> I hate him. Janet Yellen is transitory. Debatable. Should probably be long, around longer than us. Who knows? Uh, no, I'm not a big poo uh, scuba diver. You know what? That's a good point. Aboriginal alien. Uh, Powell's just trying to make things sound good because he's going to bring a lot more pain. But we all know he's going to bring a bunch of pain. Well, let's just be honest. If he says the economy's awesome and he's like, well, I told you it was awesome. That means to me, three quarter to a full point basis, basis, uh, bibs, basis points. Yeah, he's all over the place. <laughs> well, I love the clown filter too. Some people get scared, so I don't use that much. So I, I'm scared of clowns. He is fast. He's got a good, got a good vertical too. Gonna be a good athlete. Oh, I don't know, man. John Luis, John Luis, I'm glad you're here because uh, I believe it was you who asked me that great question about uh, uh, the cut. And you said, and I think it was you who said, uh, hey, Rob, if we're looking at the criteria that you use to evaluate projects, will it make the cut? The community, the utility, the team, the tokenomics. What went wrong with the, with the cut when you talked about uh, with Voyager, with Celsius, and with Nexo. Well, I didn't really talk about Nexo, but Voyager and Celsius, I did. And I, I gave a really, honestly, a half ass answer. But really, what it comes down to is this the cut. When I talk about the cut, which we talk about a lot in Dan Degen, we're talking about the community, which I think is what drives a lot of these projects, especially if you have like, you know, millions and millions of people in your community and you're pushing for it. That is a huge, uh, uh, gain that is a huge positive for the project. The utility, what does it do? 
And of course, is it a me too project? The team, what have they done before? So they can, we can see like if they, if they've done something good in the past may be indicated what they can do in the future. And of course, tokenomics, uh, what's the cliff? Uh, how long are these lockup periods? Am I going to get dumped on? So I talked about these as far as like with Celsius and Voyager that meets the criteria in the beginning, but the cut, the, the CUTT is really for those products that are just new and getting off the ground. So that's why over on the DJ channel, we did uh, Gensu Kishi. And the reason we like Gensu Kishi so much is because it had, it had millions of, of gamers already from Elemental Knights. They just went from Elemental Knights, which is a free to play, over to play to earn. They already had people built in because they had an iOS, an Android, a Nintendo Switch, and a PlayStation game already, uh, already for years. So it made sense. And of course, the other ones too. So that all works just to get you in the door. But just like every company that's out there, I got to tell you, when Blockbuster started up, it was a, it was a no-brainer right? You just go, oh, well, they have all these movies that you can rent and it's not even that much. I don't have to pay 10 bucks because it was 10 bucks to go to the movie theater back in the day or seven bucks to go to the movie theater. Now it's only 225 to rent this. This is, this is an easy business and there's really no overhead except for uh, the actual facility of the store and like a couple people who work there. That's a great business. I'm going to get into that. C-U-T-T, right? But as time goes on, you start to see competition. You start to see earnings go down. You start to see a lot of the technology just overtake. So the CUTT is great for the intro, but for all these products that we're into right now, we have to make sure that we are on them and make sure that we like uh, investigate as much as possible. That's why I made this channel. So you don't have to do all the work. You can just kind of listen to me for if you like these products I'm talking about and then do your own research uh, later on. So hopefully that answers your question a little bit better. Sorry, I did a bad job on the first time. <laughs> no, it's still a green screen. Even my grandson's a green screen. Uh, YouTube sending their bots to this stream. Uh, hey, Rob, any benefit to paying back my sales loan? The big thing, I would hold off. I would hold off until Simon comes on. That's a great question. You know what, Bob? I'd like you to put that question into here on this one i like to ask simon that question because you've already got, if you took a loan out you already have that money i don't know what you did with that money but like for me like it went toward my house so what if you did pay back the loan and then it just goes into a big black hole that's the question i can't give you financial advice i'm just asking the questions out loud just saying <laughs> First room, fuck. Uh, okay, so music lover says, it's a great question. So Rob, what's your opinion on Voyager? Have you been a proponent of Voyager and I got into Voyager because you are the going insolvent. So remember, they got a massive, massive uh, loan from uh, Alameda Research, Sam Bakeman Fried and FTX. So they put in, I think, it was 250 million USDC, it was 15,000 Bitcoin and a cash revolver. So that's pretty much what they loaned out to Three Arrows Capital, which we just talked about, just got liquidated. So the question is, do I, tr do I still, what's your opinion? Here's my opinion on Voyager. Trust no one. Unfortunately, let me get this out of here. See these rules right here? Trust nobody, but verify. Don't trust verify. So the five rules, it's all gone. It, whatever you're investing into, just assume that it's all gone already. And that way you won't be like, oh man, I've got this, uh, my life savings. I'm going to put this into Shiba and I'm sure it'll come back 10X. Well, if you look at it and go, this is more than I can afford to invest because I'm going to lose it all, then you won't go wrong. So never invest more than you can lose. Next one, everything's a scam until proven otherwise. And the next one is don't leave anything on, don't leave anything on exchanges. This rule saved my bacon on Celsius. On June 12th, when I made that video in the morning, nine hours later, they shut down. And I, I, I said on June 12th, go, it's a good idea to take your money off, your crypto off. And nine hours later, they shut down all withdrawals. So with this one, even in Voyager, I'm not keeping more than 3% of any of my crypto on any one exchange. Now I keep some on there if I want to do uh, limit orders. You know, maybe I want to uh, sell at a certain price, so they're going to be there. Or maybe I'm just lazy and I haven't gotten off yet. 
But uh, with Voyager, I still use them to buy and sell crypto. They are my DCA of choice. Some people may say, I'm not going to do that. But don't do that. But that's just me, what I'm doing. But uh, I don't trust uh, anybody at any time. I mean, I like the people over there. I like Steve and Amate and all that, that, that whole group. I love those. I mean, I like them a lot. However, it's, a, it's an investment. And that's what you got to remember. So you just go from there. Sam says, you lost me. Somebody you don't believe in the space, then why are you here for the money? So you have to say that question again. I don't understand what you're saying. I didn't say I don't believe in the space. I'm talking about how Jay Powell is probably going to raise rates. The uh, crypto and all digital assets are probably going to go down. Probably a good idea to dollar cost average. Like, this is what I'm doing. I can tell what you do. And um, I don't know where this question comes from, Sam. Sorry. So maybe if you... Uh, give me an example I can tell you. Sam Bakeman fried reminds me of when George Soros, <laughs> short of the pound, the UK got screwed. Yeah, but he made a lot of money. First Coast says, Rob, is a Simon interview going to go live tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow, 10 a.m. Mountain, high noon Pacific time. Eastern time, shoot, sorry. What's your time? Surely everyone's going to get out time? No, because... Like, you dollar, this is, man, to go over this again, you dollar, what I do is, and not telling you what to do, but I dollar cost in and I dollar cost out. So let's say today I buy one Bitcoin at $20,000, okay? And then tomorrow, let's say I buy another Bitcoin at 21,000. And then the next day I buy another Bitcoin at 20,000 or whatever, right? So now I'm at $61,000. As time goes on, then maybe Bitcoin goes up to the price of 40,000 and I buy another Bitcoin at 40,000. Okay, so I have the $40,000 and then maybe it goes down to 15,000. I buy another one at 15,000. Maybe the ones that I bought over here, the three at 20, 21 and 20, remember how I bought it at 40 over here? Maybe I could take a little bit of profits over here and then just start planting the seeds. It's all just planting the seeds. I buy a 20, 20, 20, 20 and then I, and then maybe I wait a little bit, buy a little 20, 20, 25, or whatever else it is. And as time goes on, I take profits from the ones I uh, dollar cost average in the beginning. So a better example would be when I got in 2017, I was buying Bitcoin at 6,500, 8,500, 10,000 flat, 12,500, and 17,500. And then around 2021, when things went crazy, I was taking profits at around 40,000. I was taking profits around 50,000, but I was still buying along the way. So to me, there really is no get out time, but maybe the position, the original. So I hope that answer your question. Uh, <laughs> liquidation is not taxable. It's a tax write off. That's right. Sell short squeeze. What do you think? I don't short, but I know there's a, there's a uh, big short squeeze campaign for the Celsius token. Although I don't think it's going to do a lot of help for the people who have their crypto locked up right now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to get sued, so I won't. I have no idea. What's the worst thing Simon can say tomorrow? Let your imagination run free. It could be bad. Yeah, I mean... Uh, it's just, look, everybody's ticked off because the market didn't go where they thought they were going to go. So, of course, they're going to be, you know, a little upset. So, who you take it out on? The guy that's talking to you. And of course, everybody's just like that. Or not everybody, but some people are just like that. They're just ticked off. Sorry. I mean, it is the market. Ah, uh, yeah. So, I've reached out to Alchemy to talk to us about um, how they are, how you're able to gain yield by keeping your crypto on your ledger, your cold wallet, but also gaining yield by using alchemy. It doesn't make much sense to me. And uh, I'm very weary about new projects and things like that. <laughs> Christian, can't wait to build up them silo bags. I sold silo a while ago. That is just not moving. Ah, no Lambo for you. Humble pie alert. Swept app number three, number four, and health fitness app stores. Okay. 
So that was number three, number four. Hi, Robin. Top of the liquidation being a time. What do you mean by that? So when you when you take out a loan on your crypto and you get cash for that, that's not selling. So you don't have to pay you don't have to pay uh, short or long term capital gains on that as long as you pay it back, just like just like a switcheroo. But if you get liquidated, that means that they have to sell that crypto, and that would be like you selling your crypto, which means whatever, if it's short or long-term, however long you had it, they sold it for you. It's a sale. Now it's uh, going to be a taxable event. Uh, well, Dixon, tomorrow, 10 a.m., Mountain Standard Time. There's a link in the description, and uh, you can... Ba -ba 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 -ba. And it looks, there's a thumbnail looks like that. Celsius recovery plan tomorrow at 10 a.m. All right. Where else are we? Oh, what? Jerome Powell is a puppet for the richest. And no, Elon is not the rich. You will never know where they are. Okay. JJ, well, everybody's in it for the money and no one is in there for the project or to improve our enemies. Who cares as soon as it goes up, everybody's going to be up. I don't know, man. I mean, I've been here since 2017. Still making it. But you know, there's a point to that. Like, I do hate when people say like, oh, I'm here because it's going to, you know, be the, the greatest thing ever and it's uh you know bitcoin's going to and let's be honest uh bitcoin was a great currency when you didn't have a lot of people using it and that's true and uh then in 2017 we figured out well we can't use bitcoin that much because the transaction fees were so high and it was super slow and then segwit came around the, the light network came about and then it actually was a currency again and you can actually use it for a transaction and that's what El Salvador is doing right now. So it actually is good. There was a, there was a good comment. It was by Mark Moss. And he was talking about the, the new technology that, that comes out. We don't even understand what it's going to do. Like in the very early, early days of, 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 of mankind, we figured out about steel. So we made swords and and uh, arrowheads and, and axes, and that was the greatest thing of all time. And then later on, we figured out, well, maybe we should use this to make buildings. And, maybe, and then later on, we said, let's make skyscrapers. And later on, we said, you know what, let's, make, let's take this deal and make rockets out of it and go to the moon. So like, just because we have this new technology doesn't mean we know exactly what we're going to do with it right now. And I think that's the same thing with, with Bitcoin, crypto, and digital assets. So that's why I'm not going to leave anytime soon. I will take profits. I, that's just the truth. That's my my fifth rule right there. So uh, hope no one's disillusioned by that. But yeah, I have not, but I've seen videos on it. XRP Ledger, uh, fast and cheap. As my grandson, and of course he wants to be part of it. Uh, <laughs> We give you $200 stimulus and take back 36 and run inflated action. Yeah. So Productions B says, when you say not your key, not your crypto, when you liquid and they sell the crypto, not your key. Yes, exactly. So when you put it on Celsius or any exchange, you got to understand they own that stuff. You don't own that. And that's what happened with Celsius users. They, they, they put it on there, wanted to gain a bunch of yield and that's fine, but they I've seen people, they put their entire life savings on there. And it's just a big disaster. So when you're doing anything with an exchange that you think that they have your best interest at hearts, maybe, but uh, I'd rather trust myself. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Richard says Mashwick is a bigger scam than Celsius. I don't know. Well, they are registered with the SEC. Every single painting. So that's one part. 
Uh, oh, November for you. Takes a break from trolling me and says something nice. Uh, Zeno Strip, corporate banks are law. Senior debt providers get paid first, then secondary, then preferred shareholders, then common shareholders, then us. Wow, that's probably true. When void your debit card? I have mine. Don't use it that much. <laughs> hey, people listen to Richard Hart. They wouldn't have lost their monies on Luna and Cell. Yeah, he did say it. Oh, man, look at Mullet's finally here. I made last year so I checked the archives. Yeah. Mullet, what's the plan? Remind each other to take profits. That's right. Uh, I was just texting him yesterday, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Robbie should collaborate with Paul Barone Network for a show. Yeah, we're just talking about some different things. I've been on there a couple of times. He's been on mine for a while, or every so often. Great guy. Uh, <laughs> here's the funny thing. Where would this go? Rob, if I make it, I'm going to buy you a Lambo as a gift, and I personally deliver it to you. Here's the thing. I don't need anything. I'm good, especially not a Lambo. You ever try to get in those? I have bad knees. So <laughs> I don't I don't want to. I don't want to save your money, invest it in something, take care of your family, and everything else. Uh, I'm good. Let's see. Sweat token are worthless. Yeah, I think it's going to do pretty well. Ooh, a Nissan. Got to do some. I got a sweet uh, Dodge Grand Caravan. Mullet knows he's ro he's he's rode it before. Sweet ride. Uh, Legendary says, will the live chat be on for tomorrow? Yes, it will. So stop on by. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions. And Lewis says, start from the beginning. I just got here. Uh, that's a great opportunity to stay by. All right, everybody. We're gone almost an hour, so that's it. So look, if you like today's video, thumbs up and subscribe and all that good stuff. But uh, tomorrow I think is the fireworks and let's see what Simon has to say. This ought to be great. Uh, again, links are in the description for the video tomorrow. Set a reminder so you don't forget and that's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Talk to you in the next one. Adios. Bye, Gabe.